Hello, 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 hello. Good morning. It's Kate Bolt, Independent Stampin' Up! Demonstrator here for another Coffee and Cards Facebook Live on a Tuesday morning. Let me move away a little bit. I seem to be very close to you. Good morning, good morning. Let me know if you're watching. Let me know. I'd love to see if you're with me. Ah, welcome. Welcome, welcome. It's very distinctly autumn. Hi, Jen. Good morning. Hi, Shaz. Um, it's very much autumn here. Hi, Jenny. Lovely to see you. Um, the weather is pretty rubbish. It's been rainy and windy and the temperature's dropping. Hi, Carol. But the sun is trying to come out in between, so that's something. So autumn has arrived and I thought I'd have another little play with this gorgeous paper pumpkin stamp set a uh, paper pumpkin sorry pretty pumpkin stamp set i was distracted hello lily good morning good morning everybody i've seen all your lovely faces and names pop up and i was just like oh look and i got very distracted so we're going to use this beautiful stamp set called pretty pumpkins and it's got these gorgeous images in it and it's got some lovely sentiments on it. It's got, if friends were pumpkins, I'd pick you. It's got so thankful for you. And it's got gathered together and some really nice images. It's a great set. It comes with a die set that coordinates with it. I don't think it matches it. I'll check that. I think it coordinates with it. It's beautiful. I don't have it yet. I don't know why I got the stamp set on its own, but I love it. So I'm just playing with the stamp set, which is perfect for coffee and cards. Now... I am trying to go live this morning, but we are having our boiler replaced. There is a lot of drilling, there's a lot of banging, and all of that that goes with a little bit of building work. Morning, Linda. So I will endeavour. Now, if this goes all really badly wrong and the noise is too bad to carry on, I will pre-record the video and pop it in on my Facebook page so you can watch what I make. But fingers crossed, because I love chatting to you guys more than anything. Okay. I'm going to have a bit of fun with this one. I've decided to get not too technical. It's coffee and cards, but I've got the blends out. It's going to do a little bit of colouring. Um, I've got an embossing folder to play with. And a tiny little bit of watercolouring and heat embossing. But not too much. Nothing too difficult. Yes, Jenny, at least Facebook is working today. Facebook went away yesterday for about five hours. Um, I spent yesterday doing a lot of admin work and posting on social media and doing all those kind of things in the morning. I actually had a change of scenery, took my laptop, went off into town to a coffee shop, did a load of work there. It was really civilised and nice. But then in the evening, I had a whole load of housework catching up to do. I mean, a ton. And I got, I feel it was really late. I mean, we ate dinner and then I carried on and it must have been about half past ten at night. And uh, I went onto my phone and everyone was going, Facebook went down. And I was like, did it? <laughs> I didn't even notice. But apparently Facebook, WhatsApp and Instagram all went down. And I'd been working solidly on it all day up until probably just before it went down and I didn't even know. So lucky for me, but... um. Yeah, so everything's back working. We're very lucky it's working today. Makes us realise how much we rely on these things, but never mind, let's go with it. Okay, so I'm going to turn the camera around. Uh, I don't have my laptop on. Do I have it in here? No, so we're going to have to, I'll, I'll still be able to see the comments, so that's okay. Right, let's turn it around. So do bear with me as I adjust the tripod. Lovely to see you, Jan. Just give me a second. I'm going to turn the camera around. It'll be a little bit awkward just for a moment. Here we go. Although it's a bit of an easy one. I think I've adjusted it so it'll make it a little bit easier there. If I can get it in the tripod. Here we go. Right. It's a bit of a drill and drill. Drill day? <laughs> Dull and dreary day. The sun was out earlier, but it's got very dull. So I'm hoping the lighting's okay. I've got an extra light in and I've got my overhead lights and I've got my blinds open with lots of daylight. So fingers crossed. So first card. I am going to show you how I cut my card bases. It's a very simple way to cut my card bases that uh, fit in a nicely in a C6 envelope. Something that we take for granted that everybody knows how to do. But I have to tell you, when I first started uh, stamping up, I was more of a scrapbooker and I didn't even know how to cut a regular card base. So I'm going to show you. 
um, and I'm going to do it this way this morning. So I've got a piece of A4 card. This is our basic grey and I am going to have the short end at the top of my trimmer and I'm going to put it at 10.5 which is halfway along because it's 21 along and I'm going to score it with my scoring blade all the way down. Good morning Linda, lovely to see you. And then I'm going to turn it around so the long side is at the top and I'm just going to pop it along to about 14.8 and a half centimetres and I'm going to cut it in half and I have two card bases exactly the right size from one sheet of <laughs> sorry one sheet of a4 cardstock and there we go and that's a c6 card base so there you go all righty so i only need one let's put that one for later i have a nice little box that i keep on the side when i cut a piece of a4 card um, in half and i only use one i pop it in this little box and i've got them all prepared for later all right, now I've got a piece of basic white card and this is going to be my layer of my card that I'm going to do my stamping on. And all I've done is cut it along one side half a centimetre smaller and this side half a centimetre smaller. So this side is 14.3 and this side is 10. And that's my layer. And I've done two exactly the same. One will go inside to put my sentiments on. Okay, this is the fun bit. This is the fun bit. Now, I did change my mind on what colour I was going to stamp in, I think. Did I grab that? No, let's grab it. I think I'm going for early espresso, if I can find it. There it is. I was going for grey and changed my mind. And I'll show you, You'll, it all will become apparent. So I'm using this lovely one with a trio of pumpkins. It's really lovely. And I'm going to stamp it here. Other side. Like this. So it's a really nice dark brown colour. I'm going to cover it up, but I want the tendrils to show. Okay move that onto my cleaner okay so we've got that one and then I've got a piece of card that's spare here that I'm going to use and I'm going to stamp it again doesn't matter what I stamp it in this time but I'll stamp it in no I think I might stamp it in grey uh, should I stamp it in grey or brown let me see I think I'm going to stamp it in grey because that's what I did before when I made the card. Okay. Morning, Helen. You no, you're not late, but congratulations to you. How oh, fabulous! Right. So I'm just going to stamp the pumpkins here in smoky slate. I just got a nice. I think it's smoky slate. I'm going for. I just got a nice grey. Did I stamp that a bit awkwardly? I did. I picked it up and put it down again. You can hardly see though. I think it would have been fine. There we go. And this is where we get a little bit of colouring in. I love this. So I've got all my stamping blends. I'm not going to use all these colours. I've got a ton here. So I am going to use a couple of them. Let's pick some out. I'm going to go for Light Bermuda Bay. I don't think I need the dark one. I certainly don't want blue. I don't know what I've got that one out for. Uh, I don't need the smoky slate. I need one green. This one will do. That's a light old olive. We're going to go for a bit of dark pool party. Have the light one in there. And that's ivory. What one is this then? Ah, I was looking for crumb cake. Let me grab the crumb cake. I was using the wrong colour. There we are, light crumb cake. So these are going to colour my pumpkins because we're going to have pumpkins that are not the same as your regular nice orangey ones that we get in the UK. I was doing some colouring in the other day and I popped it on my Facebook page and I found some pictures of those really beautiful kind of greeny, tealy colour pumpkins and I thought I would have a go at those. So let's go for it. So fun have it a little bit different so when I do my colouring in with my blends I like to go in with my dark first 
like this. Just around the edges. And I like to use the bullet point to get in these little, there's a nice brush tip as well. You can see there, but I quite like the bullet point for coloring in, unless it's large areas. And I'm just gonna go around like this. Okay, so I know that it's gonna look a bit more colored on the top like that. And then I'm gonna come in with the lighter one. That is the lighter one. So I'm coming in with a dark pool party because that kind of will blend nicely. And so the key to this is keep working it in nice circular motions until you blend out any sharp edges that you can see of where the colors meet. And these pens are amazing for that. They just blend so nicely. So go all the way down and then blend away. Like this. Makes a bit of a squeaky sound. <laughs> I'm always squeaking. So yeah, just make sure there's no edges. You might find you have a little lighter bit in the middle. Where the light's catching the pumpkin. Like that. So you've got one like that. And then you can do the other one similarly. Similarly. <laughs> Congratulations on getting your jab, Helen. You had your booster. Didn't want to say it for you, but I thought it was really exciting. There we go, drop it here. I'm sorry if you can hear all that banging. What can I say? It's a lot easier than it was, a lot less than it was, I have to say. <laughs> oh. Here we go, let's just blend that together. I just love this colour. It's just unusual for a pumpkin. We don't see them uh, that colour very much. Although I did actually, a few years ago, we grew on the allotment, we grew a load of these like, I don't even know what kind of uh, gourd they were, but they were like this kind of little tiny pumpkins and they were like a milky white colour. And they were beautiful. We didn't eat them. I don't think they were that good for eating they were tiny but we use I used mine as decorations on my doorstep it was so much fun at Halloween and things or well, just an autumn if you like to decorate the house for autumn thank you and then I've got a lighter color here so you can have a much lighter color as well if that's too dark Make sure it's all blended well. There we go. So that's it. I've just used three colours. That's um, Dark and Light Pool Party with Light Bermuda Bay. Then I've got a crumb cake. This is light crumb cake. I'm going in for the pumpkin stems. So there's a lot of colouring in this morning. <laughs> there we go. Look like that. And then we have got light old olive. Oh, don't get my lid off. For these beautiful, lovely, big pumpkin leaves. And you could use lots of colours and blend them in so it looks like your leaves are turning. Because normally by the time you pick a pumpkin, the leaves are all turning, aren't they? So you wouldn't, they wouldn't be a uniform green. little bit of dark in the middle just to give it a bit of colour. And then I can go back over and blend that dark in. So if you don't own the blends, you might need a few because they are amazing to colour with. Colouring in your stamped images.
There we go. So we've got a nice blended leaf. Okay, so let's put those out of the way for a moment. We don't need those. And I'm going to grab in my little snips and we're going to cut it out. So we're just going to go around and cut out our pumpkin. Now it's a really simple shape to cut. It's not hard at all, but a trick for you is don't bother with those little tendrils. Because that would be, no, it's just no, it's just too hard. <laughs> so cut the tendrils off when you're going around. Okay, and just carry on cutting until you've got your pumpkins cut out. I've done mine already, Blue Peter style. I have my pumpkins already done. Okay, and what I'm going to do is we're going to put this through an embossing folder. So we're going to create a brickwork background and I have got the bricks and mortar embossing folder here. And I'm going to pop it through and I pop it through so we've got a brick wall. So I'm going to have my bricks going horizontally. I'm going to pop this through. I'm going to make sure my bricks look right. And I'm going to pop it through my Stampin' Up! Cut and Emboss machine. So it's not actually just a, it's not a completely stamped ink and paper simple stamping card. We do have a little bit of embellishment going on there. Nothing because my husband has just crept in with a cup of coffee for me. Bless his little heart. You can't have coffee and cards without a coffee, can you? Oh, there are some hooks to him working from home. How nice is that? Okay, so we have our um we have our brickwork embossing folder. So with all this beautiful I love this because some of them are raised and some of them are just there. Look at that, so it's really good. And it's good for sponging on. If you want to put a little bit of um, crumb cake or espresso, espresso ink on a sponge dauber and just sponge it over, you get a really nice distressed wall. I wanted to keep mine white. Thanks, Jan. Now, you can see that you can see that it's embossed through the pumpkins, but that doesn't matter. I only stamped them before I uh, did it because I wanted the tendrils on there so that when I stick them on there, I've still got them. Does that make sense? So I could cut them out without worrying, but I've still got them like that. And I stamped it before I embossed it because that's much easier to stamp that way. And that's going to go on there. And I think I'm just going to grab a couple of sticky foam pads. Ooh, my glue's all stuck together. Look at this. <laughs> and I'm going to pop my pumpkins up on those. Oh dear. Now, we don't do Thanksgiving. I like Halloween, a lot of people don't. We don't send cards for Halloween really in the UK, but I never dismiss, dismiss these autumnal stamp sets. They are so beautiful and so pretty and perfect to send a really nice card to a friend or a neighbor or somebody whomsoever you want to send a card to, so. Yeah, look, there it is. And you can see a little bit behind, but you can definitely see your tendrils and you've managed to get that on there. Milk, no sugar, Jim. Helen wants a cuppa. <laughs> you can't hear me. Okay, so I've got my grey piece. That's going to go on here. And I chose the grey because it kind of makes it pop a little bit like that. Now we need to put our sentiment on here. And I'm going to stamp, I think I've got it out already. If friends were pumpkins, I would pick you because I really like it and I think I would send that to someone. So it's a matter of finding the, find the um, stamp that you think works for you. I would definitely send that. I'm not sure if I'd send Gather Together unless it was an invitation um, or if it was for Harvest. I don't know if you send greetings for harvest festivals or anything like that, but other than that, I probably wouldn't use that one so much. Invitation would be nice. Okay, I'm going for the grey, so I'm going for Smoky Slate. I could go for the Bermuda Bay, but I think I think it's this. And I'm going to stamp it on here. Thank you. If friends were pumpkins, I'd pick you. I could send this to any one of you guys and it would be completely appropriate. <laughs> right, I'm going to kind of just chop it out roughly. 
from my scrap paper and then I'm going to cut it out with my scissors. So you can get your little sentiment on your strip of cardstock and you can put it on in a rectangle if you're worried about cut, fussy cutting out. That's just, I hate that word fussy cutting. If you're worried about cutting it out with your snips, you could just do it in a rectangle. You could also use one of our stitch rectangle dies or any of those nice label dies. But if you want to, you can cut it out like this, which is what I'm going to go for. Especially as it's coffee and cards, we don't want to make it too, too much. Oh, definitely. And when I'm cutting out, I like to leave a little, not much, a little white border. Just like you do when you get an embossed image. And I've gone quiet because I'm concentrating. <laughs> and I did cut this out already, but let's go for it. And then you can just go around the words. Wow, the workmen have gone a bit quiet. You know, we, you know, I, we definitely need a new boiler. It's working fine, but it's absolutely ancient. And so we do not want to get caught out in the winter. So we're having it done. <laughs> I know, why do we always have orange pumpkins, Lily? I really like the, the turquoise ones. Um, oh, I'm having trouble with my words today. I did see when I looked online, I was looking at images of pumpkins, different colour ones, and I did see that you can actually buy seeds in the UK for these colour pumpkins. So maybe next year I might have a go and see what I can get to grow. Right. Okay, so I have cut out, if friends were pumpkins, I'd pick you. It's not perfectly cut, does it matter? No. I might just trim that a little bit though. It's just looking a little bit fat on the, on the Y. There we go, that's better. There, oops, a daisy, and I'm going to pop this on here. If friends were pumpkins, I would pick you, and I think I'm going to glue it flat. Oh, I am going to try it, try something out that I was going to do on this card, though. Hang on a sec. I'm going to grab my stamp and write markers. Now, we don't have to do this, it was just an idea. It may fail miserably, but I thought I'd have a go. If I can find my Bermuda Bay one. No, that's an old colour. That's pretty peacock. Goodness, I don't know why that's in there. That's retired, but that would be a nice colour. Here it is. Okay, so I have picked out my favourite colour, Coastal Cabana and Bermuda Bay. I'm going to grab my scrap of card, move this out of the way and have a go at it see if it makes the effect that I want it to. So here's a trick with your um, markers, if you own any of these. These are different to these. So these are alcohol markers that I just used to colour in. That's why they blend so well. These are the watercolour stamping right markers, and these are good for good old-fashioned colouring in um, and using, you can use these to colour in your red rubber stamps and all sorts. Okay, I'm going to do a bit of splattering by doing that. Yeah, I like that, but it might be a bit intense. If I do it further away, will it work? Yes, so I'm going to try it a bit further away. I should have done it before I put my pumpkins on. I'd forgotten about my plan. Let's cover that up. Okay. I just want a little bit 
of something on this card. Got to get a bit messy, haven't we? There we are. Oh, I like that. I like a bit of splatter. <laughs> if friends were pumpkins, I'd pick you. Right, I think we will... I don't know if to raise it up or stick it down. I think I'll stick it down. I think it will look neater. Right. So a couple of techniques we've used, um, oh, it's far too much glue. We have used uh, an embossing folder and we have splattered ink a little bit. Thank you, Jan. Having great fun with it. So here we are, let's pop it there. Make sure that's on nicely. I'm going to put it on our card base like that. Oh, I like the different colour there. Could do with a little bit more down here, couldn't we? I might just put a little bit more on there. Watch, I don't get carried away though. I'm good at that. What was I using? Was this the Coastal Cabana? It might have been. It might have been Bermuda Bay. Who knows? There we go. That's nice. Oh, yes. I've got the two colours, which matches in with that quite nicely. Right, let's stick it together. Okay, if friends... Oh, I'll put it on the front. If friends were pumpkins, I'd pick you, yeah. It would help if I put the front on the front, wouldn't it? So that's that. And then on the inside, I've got another piece ready for the inside. I am going to put that here. I'm going to put... So thankful for you on there. You could put thank you if you wanted, if this was a bit too much, but I like that. I'm doing that. And I'm going to do that in the grey. All hands. So thankful for you. Got, there we are, it's clean. That one's going to go on there. Of course, um, the heating's on as well, which is interesting because the heating is blasting through the house. They have put something through the heating system to give it a good clean up. I'm going to use this. Now, what I would normally do is stamp the pumpkins here colour them in and then stick it into my card. But seeing as I've already got some made, I am going to use the ones I've got. I'm just going to cut them out. And pop them up. Yeah, so the house is roasting. I feel like I want a little sleep in the corner. <laughs> you could stamp your pumpkin underneath so that you end up with those tendrils again. So this stamp set would be perfect just to stamp with, colour with, do a very simple card, but there's a lot you can do with it. And it's nice to get more from your stamps. So how's everyone today? Hope you're all great.
I think we have a new Christmas kit that's launched today. Another one. One we've been waiting for. I'm pretty sure I saw that when I looked on our demonstrator updates that we have a new Christmas kit and I'm pretty sure it's open to everyone, customers and demos. So check that out in my online shop because it looks gorgeous. Okay, so we're going to put that here like that. I'm not going to stamp it behind. I think that's fine. Of course, if you like orange pumpkins better because it's more traditional, go for orange ones. There we are. Just stuck nicely. And then we can pop it into our card. Don't forget to stamp some on your envelopes, guys. There we go. So don't forget, you can find this pretty pumpkin stamp set in my online shop at katebolt.stampinup.net or you can find everything over on my blog at inkstampshare.ink. Oh, and I'm doing Blogtober. Oh, it's a tags kit. Thanks, Carol, and good morning to you. I knew we were waiting for a nice tags kit. Thank you. So there we go. There's our first card. If friends were pumpkins, I'd pick you. So thankful for you. There, I've got bits of glue. There we are. It's popping off. How nice is that? I really like that. That's a nice one. Right, I'm going to put that one to the side and I've got a bit, of, a bit more fun for you. Now, this one's in my head. It's not quite on the paper yet, but we'll give it a go. I have taken... Um, Hang on a minute. Yeah, I'm going to use grey. Well, let's go with the grey. So we're going to use this other grey, uh, basic grey card base. And I've got a piece of watercolour. Some of our Fluid 100 watercolour paper. And I've cut it to the same size. So 14.3 by 10. Okay. And we're going to have a bit of fun with watercolouring now. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. <laughs> so I have got a water painter brush. Oh, I could do with a bit more of a fine tip one than that. Let me just grab it. I knew I should have got a fine tip one when we started. Okay, maybe that I can't find it. That might be why I didn't get it. I had it ready next to me, silly lady. Oh my. Right, here we go. <laughs> so if you're not um, used to the water painters, they're a fluid filled chemi. You fill it with water and you have a brush on the end. So I am going to put some water down before I do anything just on my watercolour paper like this. Quite a lot. Can you see the water? Like that. Okay. And then I've got a whole host of different colours. I have got pumpkin pie, which is apt for the pumpkins. I've got a bit of mango melody, Bermuda Bay, pool party and coastal cabana. So I think I'm going to take my favourite colour, coastal cabana. I'm going to squeeze it together. Now, I'm going to use this here as a paint palette. If you don't like having a mess in your lid, wipe it out when you've finished or take a re a bottle and put some on an acrylic block on the back of an acrylic block and use your paintbrush that way and then you won't have any in your lid if you don't like that kind of thing. And I am just going to wash and make it a very, very faint background. You can do this with any colour and blend it in all the way. You can add more water as long as you're using watercolour paper because our regular cardstock wouldn't hold this amount of water at all. Okay, so there we go. We have got our kind of wash. All right. Now this is the fun bit. I'm going to stamp it. 
can't remember what colour I stamped it in, but I think we're going to go for grey. So let's grab this again. Now this is quite wet and I'm going to be using embossing powder on this. So I'm going to dry it with my heat tool first. Because otherwise, if I pour embossing powder on here now, it's going to stick everywhere I don't want it to stick. I'm going to give it a quick dry with my heat gun. It will curl up a bit, that's okay. Don't worry about that. Dries pretty quickly. See it curling up? And then it'll go flat again. That's it, that's pretty dry. Okay, so this is the fun bit. We are going to stamp it. This is another tip for you. You can stamp um, heat emboss in any colour you like using your own ink pads. So I'm going to stamp this one in smoky slate here, like that. So we've got that. But then if I use clear embossing powder on it, let me grab a scrappy bit of paper. The clear embossing powder should grab where we have inked it up. So you don't even need Versamark for this. Instead of using Versamark, I've used my regular ink pad. Does that make sense? Okay. Right, let's put this one back in the in the pot so we don't lose it okay so next part is just to heat emboss that heat it i mean Heat embossing a stamped image means that you can watercolour inside the lines. If you don't use too much fluid, it will keep it inside the lines and stop the watercolour from bleeding around the image <clears throat> a little bit. Kind of gives it some something to keep it in. It's very hot. So you can generally tell when your embossing is done, when it goes shiny. It's taken a little while this morning. Do it on the back. <laughs> Want to make sure. Yep, so none of the embossing pair is coming off. That's set nicely. Okay, so this is the fun bit, guys. We're going to start a bit of watercolouring. I think we're going to get in a bit of Coastal Cabana, a little bit of Bermuda Bay, and a little bit of Pumpkin Pie, and a little bit of Grey. Okay, now I haven't done this, <laughs> so let's hope it works. Okay, so let me just clean my brush off. Have a paper towel or something to clean your brush off in between colours. And I think I'm going to do the big one in the pumpkin pie. Makes sense to me. So we're just going to go in and colour it in. And because that watercolour wash at the back is a very pale colour, we can colour over that without too many issues. So, I love the water painters. You can take them anywhere and you don't need to take a paintbrush and water or a paint palette. You can just take your inks and you can take your water painter and you're away. Great for on the go. So I'm going to let that dry. I'm going to come back into it after and add a little bit more colour in there. Morning, Claire. Okay, so that's that one. I'm going to use a bit of grey and see how this works. Now, I only want a tiny bit, 
and I want quite a lot of water because I want it very pale. Right, and I'm going to do it on this one here. Um, and I want to give it the idea of it looks a little bit like that, those milky kind of white ones that I grew on the allotment last year. Not last year, a few years ago, whenever it was. Certainly not last year. There we go. So that's that. And then I think we're going to go in with one of those pretty kind of turquoise, jadey, whatever colour um, ones over here. I did try it in the watercolour pencils. I'll show you that as well. Uh, what I did with it. The end result. So let's just pop this in. No, I don't think we'll use the Bermuda Bay. I think this Coastal Cabana is very strong. It's strong enough for what we want. You could graduate your colour down and add more depth. Whatever you want, really. Cute, aren't they? Cute little pumpkins. Then we need... Then we need, then we need some green. Did I bring any green? I thought I picked out old olive. No, I did it in everything else but the ink pads. Okay. Old olive, there you are. So, old olive for the leaves. <laughs> oh, let's squish that a little bit. Got to be quite firm with it to make it work. Just. And so the embossing is keeping that. So if you'd stamped this um, and you were using water colours, you didn't wouldn't want your ink that you stamped it into bleed um, and muddy everything. But also, it kind of keeps all the ink in the right places keeps your watercolour in the area that you're doing it, if that makes sense. And then you can add a bit more colour. Like that. Tell me if you can hear all the building work. I'd be interested to know. Okay. So that's that and then I'm just going to do the um, stems and I've picked out crumb cake. <laughs> I'm sure you can hear that. <laughs> and that's fine. They got to do it. It's got to be done. Just making sure I haven't got any green on there. There we are. Right. Put that in there. <laughs> oh my lord there we go that's that yes I think that will do okay so we've got that I can add a little bit more colour if that's dry I could add a little bit of mango melody let's see what that looks like on the pumpkin it might be completely wrong so fingers crossed Oh no, that's nice, isn't it? That gives it a much more vibrant tone. I really like that. Oh, you can hear it. I am sorry. They stopped. Poor chaps. I hope they can't hear me because they've got to do it. <laughs> Whatever it is they're doing. Right. There, I like that. That's kind of a bit more vibrant, isn't it? Okay, so there we go. Now, um, I think I'm going to put So Thankful For You on the front. 
and I've got to decide what colour to stamp it in. Do I keep this as the background? I've got a mark on it there. I wonder if I can get rid of that. Yep. Gone. Okay. Now, am I going to do it on the grey? Let me think about this. Darling. The dog is in here with me. He's hiding away from the woodman, but he's also he's always in here with me on a Tuesday. He's my shadow, to be fair. Shall we go with that one? Or I don't have any the new bay bay cut up ready. Let's have a look. So is that the right size? Not quite, but I'm sure I could cut one to fit. Shall we go pumpkin pie for our card base? Should we go smoky slate for our card base? Or should we go Bermuda Bay? What do you think, ladies? Which colour card base are we going to go for? Let me know what you think. I am tempted by the grey, but I'm very into neutrals at the moment. Bermuda Bay. You're into Bermuda Bay, Jan. Jen. Bermuda Bay. Oh, excuse me. I'm having that coffee. So I'll tell you what I could do. I could do that and that. No, that wouldn't work, but that... And that would work. But I'm thinking maybe just stick with that. Okay, I'm going to go grey and Bermuda. Take a chance, take a chance. No, I'm just going Bermuda. I've done it. I've done it. I'm going Bermuda Bay. Right. Oh, my lord. I've only got an enormous piece of Bermuda Bay, so I don't think this will work. This is not big enough. So, let's cut down my large piece. I've got a large piece here. I've got a big 12 by 12 piece of Bermuda Bay. Oh, you're leaning towards the grey now. You see, I prefer the grey. Do you know what, ladies? Because I don't have a piece of A4 Bermuda Bay to hand. I've only got a 12 by 12 piece. I am going to go with that. Although, here's another one to the mix. This is soft succulent, is it? Is that soft succulent? No, that's not soft succulent. This must be Coastal Cabana. What about that? What about Coastal Cabana? Ooh. I'm liking this combo. Oh, I am excited now. Right, we're gonna go for the two layers, guys. So we are gonna cut this at 14.3. Yes, yes. <laughs> Does not take much to excite me. I love Coastal Cabana, it's my favorite color. Oh, thanks, Lily. I do as well. We're good. Right, so now this is the same size, so I'm going to cut this down slightly. I'm going to make this 9.5 by 13.8. I'm going to cut it that end so that it's more, uh, my images are in the right place. There we are. Now it should all go. Exciting. So this one will now fit on here, and this one will now fit on here. Oh yes, I like this. So now we know what colours we're going for, we can decide what colour we are going to put So Thankful For You. And I am leaning towards the grey. You're all helping me today. This is good news. 
grey granite. Have I not got a basic grey ink pad anymore? Oh, do you know what? I don't. How have I missed that? I have every single colour and I seem to not have basic grey. I might have a really old basic grey. This is grey granite. Let's see what this looks like. If this does not work, we'll go for smoky slate. How have I not got? I bet I have got it somewhere. That's nice. Should we go for that one? That is just a slightly darker grey, which is good. This is grey granite. Go for that. Now, let's just have it straight. <laughs> straight would be nice. So thankful for you. Straight on there. It does soak in a little bit because it's watercolour, but I quite like that. Lovely. And now when we glue it, it's all going to be nice and flat. Right, just pop it on there. I do like Tombow, it kind of gives you that little moment, only a little moment, but to get it really right. How's your crochet coming on, Lynn? Lynn has been crocheting the most amazing, I can't say that word, origurumi, is that right? She's crocheting in the round, if I'm right. Beautiful little animals and things. Absolutely gorgeous. You're with like-minded souls because I love a bit of crochet. I'm doing a blanket at the moment. And uh, Helen, my sister, who's also on the call, she's also doing a little bit as well. Um, we're going to fitting it in with our paper crafting sometimes. Right, so thankful for you. Right, well, I need an inside. Let's grab a piece of cardstock for the inside. If I have any out. Well, you should see the mess I've made. <laughs> Honestly, it's terrible. I'll have to take a big piece. Glue that down really well. Cut and insert. 13.3 by 10. Oh, I thoroughly enjoyed hanging out with you guys this morning. It's been so lovely. And the sun has come out now. Oh, you're making the tooth monsters. Oh my goodness, they're so adorable. They're like these gorgeous little crocheted monsters with a pocket in for the child to put his tooth in or her tooth in for the tooth fairy. <laughs> they're just beautiful. Love them. Okay, I will stamp the pumpkins inside. I'm not going to colour them in. We'd be here forever and a day. And I'm going to kind of stamp them off so they're just peeking up there. Is it raining there in Buckingham, Linny? Oh, no. Keep it to yourself. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, dear. I will grab the Coastal Cabana and repeat the sentiment inside and I'm using this colour because it's the one that we have chosen for the layer oh did it pass very I didn't even notice Jen it was probably raining away and I didn't even see so thankful for you love this watercolour. I think I am doing a lot more of it. I haven't done it since her, such a long time. Watercolour and heat embossing. Do you know what? It's really pretty. If you get a nice leaf stamp or a pumpkin stamp and you heat embossing gold or silver, 
and then you colour in all those gorgeous autumnal colours. So nice. Right. So thankful for you. Love that. I will come back and colour in these pumpkins. And it's okay because this is, it will bleed through using the alcohol pens. It will bleed through, but we've got this on the back, so it will be fine. You keep it there. We keep, keep it away from Aylesbury. That'll be fine. <laughs> Thanks, Lynn. You keep the rain. <laughs> up your end of the woods okay here we go so if friends were pumpkins i'd pick you and so thankful for you i really like these which ones do you, which one do you like which is the best do you like the one with the bricks or do you like the what the other one i'd love to know ladies i think i have been blathering on for hours i do not know thank you so much for joining me and for sticking with me this morning whilst we played with the pretty pumpkin stamp set and i haven't even touched this one I haven't even touched it um i think this is going to be so beautiful for blending colors with um yeah so thanks for being with me if you're watching me live thank you so much and uh yeah, and you can find this in my online shop, as you know. And if you're watching me on replay, let me know. Please let me know. Oh, hello, Hilary. Lovely of you to join me. Thank you. I think I prefer the bricks. And do you know why? I really like that splattering. That's my favourite. Oh, hi, Sue. Good morning. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, if you're watching me on replay, let you let me know it's on replay. That's really helpful. Leave me a comment if you like the cards. Tell me which one you prefer. I would like to know in the comments below. Thank you. And if you're watching me on YouTube, thank you so much for joining me. Um, do give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And leave me a comment. I read and reply to all of them. And you can find everything you want to know on inkstampshare.ink, including my online shop. Anyway. Take care, ladies. I'll hopefully see you for a live on Friday. That is my intention for a Friday live over on YouTube. I am desperate to get there. <laughs> Thanks, Wendy. That's really kind of you, my lovely. And I will see you guys again later. Ah, thanks, Sue. Take, take care, guys. Bye-bye.